Brown Earsley, Harry Lucas. You're under arrest. Arrest? What are you talking about? We found the diamonds. Diamonds? What diamonds? The diamonds you stole from the Van Zandt Company. Van Zandt? We've never even been to Van Zandt's. Oh! Oh! Okay, gentlemen, the party's over. there and read that book. This is the place for adventure. There is no adventure in real life. That's why they write these books. And I'm still not speaking to you. Come on, it was an accident. It was not. You deliberately put us on the wrong plane. Two weeks in Europe wasn't enough for you. Eleven countries in 12 days. Not enough adventure. Food poisoning in Spain, an allergy attack in Holland. So now we're going to miss our Buffalo connection at JFK and be late to work on Monday. Somehow I think the mall will survive without us. I take my job seriously. Renting R-rated movies to 11-year-olds? And you should, too. If I never take another picture of a screaming baby again, it'll be too soon. I'm not speaking to you, Anne Bedingfeld. Oh, you're too weird. Look, it's different for you. You have Wayne and your family. Me, I have nobody to go back to. that man again what do you think greek smuggler albanian defector <sighs> i can't just sit here i have to go look around well take this with you because i'm not watching it i can't carry this and take pictures and if you get lost or mugged don't expect me to come to your rescue Serves Wayne. Look, look, 
You call for the just, U.S. cavalry, and I'm here. I'm, okay. Now, why don't you just sit down someplace, like right over here, and uh, relax. Be a good girl. Let me do the talking. Hey, Musha. Is that the guy's stuff? Let's go to He was uh, he was American. That's his passport. I can read it to you if you like. I can read. This morning. Leo Carton. His name was Leo Carton. For oh, this one. Yeah. Musk. He reeked of it. Uh -huh. Van Zant. He worked for the Van Zant Company. That's the diamond people, yes? Van Zant. Ah, Van Zant. Van Zant. Yes. Oh, yeah. Beautiful woman. Hello. Yes, yes. Wait a minute. Hello. A piece of paper. A paper the man took. I've got it in my purse. Uh, hello? Sir? Tall man? Oh, excuse me. Sorry. I'm not here. Uh, hello? Look, we're out here. There you are. I have... I... What about the dead man? Aren't you going to do something? Like what? Like find out what happened. Suicide. No, it wasn't suicide. The man was frightened. He was frightened. He saw somebody coming towards him. He recognized him. I'm sure he recognized him. I happened to get a look at who it was. No, I didn't get a look at it, but it wasn't suicide. I know it wasn't. You can't tell that to the guy's What's family. The a family. See? How do you know that? You don't know that. You didn't know his name. Oh my God. That's her. The picture in the wall. You got to get out of here. I saw her picture in the dead man's wallet. Well, forget about no, it. No, no, listen to me. Listen. No, listen. I knew there was something funny about this guy when he started to examine the body. He said he was a doctor. He went to feel for the heart. He went on the wrong side. I also know that he tried to steal the guy's wallet. He tried to run away. He did run away. I didn't catch up with him. You finished? This is the name of the hotel, and this is the details on the plane. No. I made all the arrangements. Now, stop <laughs> trying to be a detective. Go to bed. Get on the plane tomorrow morning and go home. I can't now, you've already contacted your friend. Did you see that And woman? she knows you're safe. And she's already gone back to the States. I don't want to leave now. The adventure hasn't started yet. There's got to be a mystery man in this story. The arrogant but sensitive hero whose piercing stare makes a woman tremble with savage desire. speak English? Of course. Oh, good. Who is she? Uh, Anita, the nightclub singer. What happened to her? Uh, she was killed yesterday by pistol at the Villa of St. Eustace Pedler. Did Pedler kill her? Oh, no, I believe not. Sir Eustace Pedler is currently in London, and his villa is for sale. The police are seeking for a man in a brown suit who was seen running from the villa directly after the murder of Anita. Man in a brown suit? There is an adventure here. I beg your pardon. $100 in traveler's checks. $800 on my credit card. This carry-on bag with everything I have in the world. And the clothes on my back. What more could a body need? You are a very strange woman. <laughs> Musk. Musk? Musk? The man in the brown suit was trying to steal this. It must be very important. It must be at the very heart of the adventure. What should I do? Go home and play it safe? Or stay here and live on the edge? Inshallah. What? Inshallah. God willing. You go or you stay. It shall be what God wills. Seven eleven twenty-two Kilmorden Castle.
Kilmorden Castle? Kilmorden Castle is a cruise ship. Here's a brochure if you want. Yes, that's what my friends must have meant. There's a sailing, excuse me, there's a sailing on Tuesday. Can you make arrangements for me? Of course. It's a very small ship. They may be full. How much is a cabin? $2,000 for first class. What second class? $1,500. Is there steerage? It's called tourist. $1,350. Do you want me to book it? Can you cash this ticket in for me? from you for keeping me waiting. I'm really terribly sorry, Sir Eustace, but the plane from Washington was delayed. Oh, yes, I'm sure. Likely story. A likely story. I was beginning to wonder if I wasn't going to have to make up the whole, the whole trip wearing the same clothes. Just as I am. With no one to unpack for me. Sir Eustace Peddler. The owner of the villa where Anita was killed. Can't just be a coincidence. May I take you back to your cabin? No, 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 no. Your hands are unclean. No one touches this precious cargo but myself. I never let it out of my sight. So you still? Susie, my darling girl. Oh, sweet of you to ask me. I know it is going to happen one more time. <laughs> yes, <laughs> indeed. <you are. laughs> oh, Captain, uh, may I introduce you to La Contessa? <laughs> Those young canas. Honey, you're behind the times. It's Mrs. Blair now. Oh, it's not, is it, really? You're a very naughty girl. You promised me next time you got married, it would be to me. Well, hold that thought, because Mr. Blair's already history. Oh, really? <laughs> is he really, I say? <laughs> How many is that? <laughs> well, let's see, there was Rolf, and then um, Baldo, and then de Chaubrier, <laughs> and then the Count Giannakis, and then my Texan, Mr. Blair. <laughs> Makes about five, doesn't it? Yes, it does indeed. Well, Sir Eustace, <laughs> long time no see. Oh, I'll have to dip my toes in a couple of scotches and chew on old times. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, indeed. Can't wait to start dipping and chewing, my dear. Um, wherever you are. Mr. Race, what are you doing here? I'm on vacation. Why aren't you on your way home? Well, it seemed a shame to come all the way here and not see anything, so I decided to stick around and take a few hundred pictures. Yeah, well, you do that carefully. This isn't Buffalo. You promise? Hello, Captain. Captain, I'm the Reverend Chichester. Oh, 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 go away, go away, you filth, you slime. No, my Bible. My precious, precious, my oh. Not one arrogant, sensitive hero in the bunch. Sugar, where have you been? I've been looking all over for you. I was convinced I'd die sooner if I stayed in my bunk. Oh, you did look sick yesterday. Mr. Race and I thought we were going to have the excitement of a burial at sea. <laughs> but now you've disappointed us. It's my cabin. There's no porthole. And the air conditioning died at four this morning. Are you telling me you're not in first class? No wonder you're sick. You have to move up immediately. Mm. Thanks for the suggestion, but 
I don't think you can move on a ship like this. Yes, you can. I did. I am now cozily residing in cabin 71. It must cost more to move. Oh, don't worry about that. I'll take care of it. By the way, I'm Susie Blair. I think you met Gordon Rice. Oh, my man betting so. I, I, I couldn't possibly let you do that. Oh, nonsense. Listen, I've spent two days on this overgrown ferry boat trying to find a woman with more on her mind than hairspray. Uh -huh. <laughs> You're my last hope. Well, thank you very much. I, I just couldn't possibly let you pay us. Well, I know the captain. Maybe something can be arranged. Okay, now look, then you have to come to lunch with us. Oh. Yep, you gotta eat something. Come on. Underhill, much as I enjoy your company close to me at all times, that does not extend to having your typewriter, your files, and your notebooks in my cabin. Of course, Eustace, I completely understand. I'll make arrangements for an additional cabin first thing in the morning. No, immediately. Yes, Eustace. Splendid fellow. A zealous man, your secretary. Yes, yes, yes. Zealous, very good word for Underhill. And painstaking, and hardworking, and admirable. And I don't know a person who annoys me more. <laughs> Are you a uh, zealous man, Reverend Chichester? Oh, I hope so. God has set me the formidable task to conquer lust, to cause us all to love each other innocently. Yes. Well, I'm sure you're the man for the job. It must have been terrible, that singer getting killed in your villa. Oh, it was. Absolutely awful. I mean, I resented it highly. There she was, killed, I mean, shot. Right there in my garden. Awful. And do you know something? As they carried the body out, they got blood all over the cashmere. All over the house, boy? No, no. No, Susie, the carpet. Mind you, I suppose sensational events do have their place in the world, but that place is not my life. Yeah, you were in London when it happened. Well, on the day of the murder? Well, yes, yeah. yes. Well, according to Underhill, I was. I don't even know there's a neater woman. I mean, who was she? I never heard of her. Neither did I. I don't know why the Egyptian press insists on calling her famous. Infamous is more like it. <laughs> Anita's best performances took place outside the spotlight. Whatever do you mean, Gordon? She was a blackmailer, a swindler, and a thief. And probably never wrote her mother. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Well, smart money says she worked for the colonel. Who's the colonel? He's somebody every government would like to find. He's into drugs for guns and guns for gold and gold for drugs, but nobody can touch him. Make him sound like Professor Moriarty. If the man in the brown suit killed Anita, then he must be the colonel. Oh, it's all just a tall tale, isn't it, Gordon? No, I don't have that kind of imagination. No, I'm sure you don't. Well, you know what, sweetheart? I talked to the captain. He said number seven is just standing vacant, so you can have it anytime you want. Oh, Susie, can you spin straw into gold, too? <laughs> What are you doing? Taking possession of the cabin that is to serve as my office. Oh, no, 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 no. This is my new accommodation. You must be mistaken. I don't make mistakes. You don't make mistakes. You must be divine. Man born of woman is full of sin. That may be so, Vicar, but you're interfering with my duties. Get out of my way. You put your hands upon a man of God. Let go of me. I'm clean, you filth. You're full of pride and lust. If you don't release me immediately, I shall report you to Sir Eustace. You may report me to the Royal Marines, if you wish. It's still my cap. It is not. Hi, guys. What died? Ah! Ah! Hello? Hello? Is something wrong? Can't you smell? It's a rat! If rats get that thing. Oh! Oh, how dreadful, madam. Oh, well, we shall move you to another cabin directly, madam. Oh, that would be very nice. 
Just in case Ben has relatives. January 22nd. Cabin number seven, 11 o'clock, on the 22nd. It's an appointment. An appointment someone doesn't want me to keep. Hello. We think you'll be much happier in cabin 36, madam. It's much more romantic. I'm not moving. But you can't stay here. Well, I'll just uh, open the window. The portholes oh, there. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Well, yes. Are you fine. sure? Absolutely. Thanks so much for your help. I so much appreciate really? it. Really? Yes. It's going to be him. I know it. I've got an appointment with my mystery man. <laughs> it must have been 11 a.m. I missed it. There's been a man wandering around the corridors, had a bit too much to drink. I was wondering if he'd burst in on you. No, nobody here but me, but thank you so much for worrying. Are and you then, sure? Oh, yes. Good really? Night. I don't need anything done for me. You don't. This is really deep. Let me put something on it. You'll do nothing of the kind. You barge in here and start telling me what to do? Well, I can relieve you of my presence. Don't be silly. You want to go bleeding all over the ship? stabbed you? Some woman. A woman? Why? Does it have something to do with the appointment? That's why you're in cabin seven, isn't it? Why are you in cabin seven? Inshallah. That means... I know what it means. That should do for now. But we have to have the ship's doctor look No at doctor. It. Would you please tell me what's going on? I'm sorry I can't satisfy your curiosity. Why not? If you want the world to know anything, just tell a woman. You think I'd tell anyone? I've no doubt of it. How dare you? I saved your life. I wish you hadn't. I'd be better off dead. I know who you are. You're the man in the brown suit. Are you going to sit here quietly and let me walk out of here? Or am I going to have to do something unpleasant? I'm going to sit here quietly and let you walk out of here. Smart move. I didn't kill Anita. She was dead when I got to Peddler's Villa. Why would any woman want to stab you?
I don't have anything. I don't have anything. Somebody was looking for something else. Somebody was looking for something else. And I'm right in the middle of it. Oh, that's too hard. Too many possibilities. Who is looking? That's the way to go. No, no, you filth, you slut! Nasty Reverend Chichester, because he tried to get this cabin. I'll make arrangements for an additional cabin this afternoon. So did Underhill. No, immediately. But Underhill works for Sir Eustace Peddler. Maybe he was just following orders. Well, you do that carefully. This is a buffalo. What about the delicious Mr. Race? seem too happy to see me again. Number seven's just standing vacant. It's yours whenever you want. Oh, Susie, Susie. It's hard to believe. But she has been awfully friendly. Maybe she's just trying to get close to find it. Whatever it is. doesn't make any sense. She got me this cabin. I didn't kill it, Eaton. There's always the man in the brown suit. But when he came here, somebody had tried to kill him. Somebody did murder Anita. And if it wasn't the man in the brown suit, and it wasn't, then this could also be a list of murder suspects. I think this adventure is getting a little more serious than I had in mind. Concerned with uh, preaching, or do you work in the fields as well? In the fields, of course. Yeah. Why is Susie paying so much attention to that fellow? And who is that fellow? He, he talks to me as though I should know him. You do, sir. We were all interrogated together in Kimberley. By George, yes. You're absolutely right. That horrendous day, the Van Zandt Company, right? I say, blocked it, blocked it, straight out of my mind. Mind you, I make a wonderful chapter in my memoirs, eh? Oh. <laughs> These world travelers are just making fun of me because this is my first trip outside the United States. Really? Well, well, what a coincidence. Because it's Underhill's first trip to the United States. He just finished, he's just come back. Oh. Yes, he was going on and on and on about uh, Watergate and um, Smithsonian. I said, well, go, man, go. go. Did you like it? Yes, it was very nice, very interesting. Have uh, you taken a lot of pictures so far? <laughs> Many, many, many. You know, the meter on my camera isn't working yet. Do I open the shutter wide to F-22 in the sunlight? Well, you mean F-2. The numbers run the other way. So F-22 is the smallest opening. 
Oh, is it? Oh, yeah, that's right. I always get that mixed up. <laughs> Sweetheart, I just love you in that get-up. Thank you, Susie. <laughs> Very fetching. Still, of course, no one outshines the king of rock and roll. Hmm? It was the last outfit in my size. Oh, come on, Underhill. Are you sure this isn't a cry from your true inner self to break free and boogie? Break free and boogie. I've no idea what that means, but it doesn't sound like anything that I'd ever undertake. <laughs> you look like you're covered in diamonds. <laughs> diamonds? Whenever I hear the word diamonds, I think of Kimberly. Kimberly who? Not who, darling, where? Kimberly, in Africa. Where the diamonds come from? And where I met Sir Eustace and Underhill, under some rather uh, trying circumstances. Yes, indeed. Oh, Gordon, I think I sense one of your fascinating stories coming up. And if it has anything to do with diamonds, you have my rapt attention. Diamonds have a leading role. It was several years ago, I happened to be in Kimberley, and a friend arranged a tour of the Van Zandt diamond mines. Sir Eustace and Underhill were also on the tour. As we watched the men sorting the diamonds, some of the packets fell to the floor, and uh, Sir Eustace helped pick them up. Indeed, indeed. I, civil gesture I shall regret for the rest of my life. Why? I'll tell you why. Because that very afternoon, when they took the packets to the bank to be checked, they found that one of the packets contained nothing but sugar cubes. Sugar, sugar cubes? cubes? Sugar cubes. Sugar cubes. Indeed. Indeed. And because I had personally handled this particular sacrosanct packet, I was naturally primary suspect. I was seized. Not only was I arrested, but I was stripped to the buff. You poor thing. I like you can imagine, I was only too happy and relieved when the real culprit was in fact apprehended. An anonymous telephone call directed the police to two young adventurers. The diamonds were found in their hotel room. They followed the men to a nightclub. I was there that night. They claimed they didn't do it, but all the evidence was against them. They would have gotten 20 years, but one of them had a rich father, a lord named Erdsley, and they got off. Erdsley? Oh, I think I know the rest of the story. But John Erdsley was one of my dearest friends. In fact, he was almost husband number three. Why, he was heartbroken when it happened. He died just three months after that. What happened to the boys? In point of fact, they swore that they'd been framed. That someone had planted the Van Zandt diamonds in their room in place of some pink diamonds that they told everyone they'd found in Brazil. Or it was they went back to Brazil to look for more diamonds to prop up their claim, and that's where the story comes to a sudden end. Indians, or something equally absurd, was it? Uh-huh. Local feds said they put enough arrows in Erdsley to mate him with a porcupine. <laughs> yeah, and then they uh, burnt him to a crisp. Gordon, must you be so graphic? Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to announce the winner of tonight's costume ball. For the best costume, the winner is Sir Eustace Pedler. Well, oh, how nice. You don't really deserve it. Thank oh, you. Dear. I'll get my prize. <laughs> Thank you. I think I'll go get my camera and take pictures of everyone in their costumes. Looking for you. Who are you? Who are you? It's so funny. Are you all right? How's your shoulder? Why didn't you report me? Because you told me you didn't kill anyone. You believe everything you're told? It's the truth, isn't it? Yes, it's the truth. Why are you going through the pockets of that dead guy, Carton, at the airport? Because I thought he had something that belonged to me. What was it? It's my business. Who's Anita? Carton's wife. I knew it. Everything is connected to everything else. Do you want to tell me the name of the game that you're playing? Hey. 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 Honey. I've been looking everywhere for you. Mm. What? You know what? You're up to something. Don't tell me you're not. 
Now, I get crazy if I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I'm dying to tell somebody. Can I trust you? I am a blood relation of General Robert E. Lee. Well, what do you think? Pretty exciting, huh? Well, pretty dangerous, I would say. I mean, I have no idea what they might be looking for, but whatever it is, I do share your feeling that it must have sent poor old Anita and her husband to the pearly gates. And as for your man in the brown suit, I think he must have read that note before he dropped it and was trying to keep the same appointment you were. With Chichester or Underhill? Maybe neither one of them. Maybe they were both trying to get into cabin number seven so they could keep the same appointment. Well, they both make real good murder suspects. Underhill's mysterious trip to Washington is a very shaky alibi for the shooting at Peddler's Villa. And Chichester's a white-faced liar if he spent two days in the African sun. I'm the queen of Romania. I knew her. What? Do you still have that note? Oh, oh, let me see. Well, honey, Anne Sugar, look at that. That's not a period after that seven. That's just a flaw in the paper. So if you read this according to the spacing, look, it's 71, 1, 22, Kilmorden Castle. <laughs> Susie. Hmm? It suddenly occurs to me that a woman stabbed the man in the brown suit. And if 71 is a cabin, it's yours. not believe that you would ever think I could stab anybody. Well, you were in cabin 71. I told you I changed cabins. Besides, Sir Eustace invited me on this jaunt. Oh. It wasn't my idea. Susie, I'm sorry. It's just at this point I suspect everybody. Not the delicious Mr. Race, I hope. Why not? Rumor has it he's CIA. Do you think it's true? I don't know. Of course, embassy staffs are just crawling with spies. And he knew all that stuff about Anita? Anyway, I find him terribly attractive. Susie, are you shopping for husband number six? Honey, every woman, whether she knows it or not, thinks that every man she meets is a possible husband, either for herself or her best friend. <laughs> In what century? Am I being passe? I marry all of them. <laughs> Have you known Peddler for long? I just met him two or three times. How did he make his money? He didn't. He inherited it. Oh, steward. Yes, madam? Would you do me a favor and ask my stewardess to put fresh towels in number seven? There are no stewardesses, madam. There has to be at least one. She was in my cabin the other night. There are no stewardesses, madam. The line does not hire female attendants. Chauvinists. Susie, the woman who stabbed the man in the brown suit is the stewardess who doesn't exist. Oh, baby, we're hot now. <laughs> you can see on the chart where we are. Here's Mombasa, which is our next port of call. All I see is that fascinating. You know so much. Oh, by the way, I'm curious. Could you tell me who had my cabin before I got it, number 71? Could you look that up? Oh, I don't even have to look that up. Number 71 was booked by Anita Carton. Somebody else already asked. Only they had the name and wanted the number. Who asked? Another American, Mr. Race. Oh, what can these numbers mean? We've added them up, we've multiplied them, we've done everything but barbecue them. Oh. It's a location. Huh? Cabin number 71, something one, something 22. Do you mean like latitude and longitude? Huh? Huh? Susie, why? Come here. What'd you find? Come, come here, come here. What? Row number one? Yeah. Tile number 19, 20, 21, 22. <gasps> I think you found it. I think 
found it. Okay. Come on. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. You want me to do it? No, it's okay. It's coming, wait. to me whoever it was who tore up your room was looking for these diamonds must have seen the note made the same mistake we did about the seven and the 71 all right that brings us to the only other person we know of who has seen this note the man in the brown suit the man killed at the airport carton must have put these here for anita uh yeah, uh-huh. That figures. And so what? He worked at the Van Zandt Company. I saw his business card at the police station. Maybe he stole them. Mm -hmm. Well, what does that have to do with the man in the brown suit, honey, and why he murdered Anita? He didn't. She was already dead when he got there. Aren't we being just a bit protective of a wanted felon? Anyway, what are we going to do with these? Now, I suggest we give them to Gordon. After what the captain said? Gordon's probably the one looking for them. What? We had the weirdest discussion about photography last night. He kept getting everything wrong and waiting for me to correct him. It was like he was checking me to see if I am who I say I am. Well, isn't that what CIA agents are supposed to do, honey? Check everybody out. Among other things. <sighs> well, I suppose we could give them to the captain, then. Why do we have to give them to anyone? My guess is these have something to do with the Van Zandt robbery. Well, of course, obviously. Don't you realize whoever is looking for these little gems is a murderer? By keeping them, we just put ourselves right in the middle of the briar patch? Not us, me. This isn't your problem. I'll, I'll hide them somewhere. Oh, sure. With half the ships skulking around through your cabin on a semi-regular basis? I hardly think so. No, sir, I will hide them. And I happen to know the perfect place. <laughs> Even customs won't be able to find them. Are you sure you want to do this? Are you sure you want to? Seems to me your little adventure has gotten out of hand, honey. I know, but... But what? Your persistence wouldn't have anything to do with a certain attractive young man who's given to wearing brown suits and desert <laughs> nightgowns, would it? <laughs> well, you don't expect me to just up and walk out in the middle of the picture now, do you? Besides, I haven't even finished my popcorn yet. I see. <laughs> you described poor John Erdsley's death the other night, but you never did say what happened to Harry Luker. Erdsley's buddy? Oh. They never found him. Oh. Our best guess is the Indians carted him off for brunch. Are you saying what I think you're saying? <laughs> oh, Gordon, please. Really? Did you find time to visit the Vietnam Memorial when you were in Washington? Yes. Yes, of course I did. It's a spectacular view from the top, isn't it? You did find time to climb all the way up to the top, right? Certainly I did. It was very tiring, but uh, well worth the effort. Harry Lucas is presumed dead. Guy Underhill spent his time in Washington climbing the Vietnam Memorial, which has no stairs. Uh-huh. In Kimberley during the robbery, mm -hmm. not in Washington during the murder. Our Mr. Underhill is starting to smell like weak old sweet potato pie. Mm. Mm. Oh. I snuck into Peddler's cabin and looked at his memoirs. Mm. He wrote about Gordon's story about the diamonds. He wrote about my legs. Really boring. I can't wait for the first edition. <laughs> Moonlight. 
fly. Music. Come on, Mr. Man, it's your cue. I speak. He enters. <laughs> See? No, didn't you? Why should someone try to kill you? Who are you? Who are you? Oh, we've already had this conversation. Oh. Oh. Somebody actually tried to kill me. Somebody tried to make me dead. What's the matter? Game getting too real for you? No. It's all right. You're okay. Are you by any chance looking for diamonds? Diamonds? How did you know? Yes, I am looking for diamonds. They were found in Brazil some years ago, but now they're lost. So am I. The two boys went back to Brazil to look for more diamonds. Susie said Harry Lucas is presumed dead. You're Harry Lucas. was it? Little doorknob or big husband? Neither. He got it trying to throw me overboard last night. I beg your pardon? You tried to kill me, didn't you? Just a minute, just a minute. Did you give him that black eye? I wish I had. The woman's raving mad. It happened late last night. I'd just been photocopying Sir Eustace's memoirs when I saw someone behaving suspiciously outside Mr. Race's cabin. I followed whoever it was round the corner and suddenly he hit me. Then he ran off before I could get a proper look at him. Oh, just him the swine! After him the swine! The swine! After him! Catch him! The swine! Catch him! Catch him out of my way, you cow! Go after him! Catch him! Oh! Go after him! That was the man in the brown suit! Can you imagine it? A murderer in our very midst! And those slackers refused to go after him. I should notify the Mombasa police immediately. Out of my way. Imagine that right in our very midst. Pertinence of that fellow. The pertinence of him. We killing someone in my villa. Then he has the temerity to join me here on holiday. I'll tell you one thing. He will not insinuate himself aboard my private railway car. I do assure you of that. You're getting off here. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, we all are. I mean, everyone at my table, I've invited them to join me, you see. How about you? You care for a leisurely journey? By train to Thompson Falls? Oh, Gordon, do come along. I accept. Good, good, good. Are you including Chichester? Ah. No, 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 no. Just, alas. No, the Padre has to continue the, uh, the trip uh, to the final port of call. Apparently, Dar es Salaam. Thanks for the invitation. It's awfully nice of you, but I, I'm afraid I can't afford it. Ah. Oh. Well, now, you see, being a thoughtful man, I have other contingencies. For instance, Underhill has to stay here and do some business for me. So I was thinking of asking you to be my secretary. <laughs> but, Sir Eustace, don't you think she's rather unsuitable? Underhill, my dear chap, good legs are never unsuitable. 
Yes. Well, thanks again, but uh, these legs are going to finish the cruise and go home. How did Chichester recognize Harry Lucas as the man in the brown suit? I don't know how that old fuddy-duddy recognized. You mean he had to be at Peddler's Villa? Exactly. Which makes him the murderer. And if he's going to Dar es Salaam, so am I. Well, what do you hope to accomplish by that? Harry Lucas did not murder Anita, and I'm going to follow Chichester around until he does something to help me prove it. Like what? Kill you? Where are the diamonds? Oh. Here. You find them yourself. <laughs> The same assumption that led customs down the garden path. Look on the outside. Everybody looks on the inside. That's positively criminal. I know, isn't it? Although I prefer to think of it as thrifty. Do you know the difference between Brazilian diamonds and South African diamonds? I'm good, but I'm not that good. Harry said he was looking for Brazilian diamonds. Maybe these are the stones he and John Ernstley said were stolen from them in Kimberley. Maybe we've got what he needs to prove his innocence. Sounds to me like your maybe is taking an awful lot of faith, honey. I've got the faith. All I need to find is Harry. Listen, could we drop all this for just a little while? Honey, I'm just dying to buy something. Let's go shopping. Oh, I don't know. Oh, come on, I'll buy you something. Come on. Susie, do you know how expensive that was? I know it. I know it. No, thanks. I could have gotten it for less. I just didn't feel like haggling. No, thank you. No, thank you. Listen, Gordon and I are going to meet for a drink. You want to join us? Oh, no, thank you. Oh, come on. I'm sure you can handle them on your own. I'll just, uh, I'll wander around and take some pictures before I have to get back to the boat. Gone. I'm going to miss you. I'm going to miss you. We we'll call each other if anything happens, all okay. right? All right. Bye, bye, honey. Oh, bye. I guess this is it. Here. Yeah. Bye. Susie. Oh, thanks. Be careful. <laughs> knew these things were instruments of torture.
I have put her in the room upstairs. Oh, that's very good, very good. She won't be here long. She won't be anywhere long. The Colonel will be here in the morning. He wants to squeeze her little brain. Have the police caught the man in the brown suit yet? No. Who is this man? It is a total mystery to me. I never saw him before in my life. He was in the Colonel's way. So I put the police on to him. Shall we have a look in on the lovely Miss America? As you wish. No doubt about it. But that's nothing. He works for the Colonel. Gordon's infamous Colonel? Yes. He didn't know who Harry was. He said he'd never met him before. So he couldn't have been at Peddler's Villa when Need was killed. The Colonel himself must have been there. So it was the Colonel who told Chichester who Harry was. The Colonel killed Anita. And the Colonel had to be on board the ship with us. Exactly. Looking for the diamonds. <gasps> Looking for the diamonds. Looking for the diamonds. That's why he had you kidnapped. He thought you had them. So, who is the colonel? Well, simple logic dictates that the same man who tried to push you overboard must have had you kidnapped. It has to be Underhill. I agree. But Underhill may only have been following orders. So Eustace. Mm. We have to split up. You go on the train and follow Peddler and Race. I'll tell everyone I'm still going to Dar es Salaam in the boat, but I won't. I'll stay in Mombasa and follow Underhill. Follow oh, Underhill. Oh, Lord, this is so exciting. I feel just like one of Charlie's angels. Maybe <laughs> you buy something. Take these. Sorry, I changed my mind. I've decided to take Sir Eustace up on his offer. He's already hired somebody. 
A matter of fact, he's dictating to her right now. I think his plan is to keep her so swamped with work she'll never get out of that apartment. Well, 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 what have we here? And my dear, dear girl. Reporting for duty, your lordliness. Oh, ho, ho, ho. God bless us, everyone. I am delivered. Do you know that malicious underhill has just landed me with the most repellent, the most tyrannical, the most... Miss Wilkie beautifully conscientious secretary it's ever been my pleasure to employ. Miss Wilkie. to the bazaar but he sent the police after me so i had to leave mombasa good lord so what do we do now well after we leave the falls we have to get back to mombasa uh -oh. ladies ladies as you can see these vendors vend rather cunning and impossible to carry about wooden figures now i'm sure that you will be tempted to purchase as many of them as you possibly can but i do beg you beg you to resist and desist there is no room, possibly no room, in the Land Rover. Miss Wilkie, don't dally. Come with me. Welcome, sir, to Thompson Falls. Now be careful about your ride. It is an extraordinary thing, you know, that I never, ever seem to get any peace. I am a man who likes a quiet life. I really do. Like my club, like a rubber of bridge, like a well-cooked meal, and a sound wine, probably sound. I like Cairo in the wintertime, and I like England in the summertime, and I absolutely refuse, totally refuse, to get involved in any of those strange, weird, and wondrous things that other people seem to enjoy. Thank you. I mean, to, to illustrate, to illustrate what I mean, I mean, just look, look at my life now, at this moment. I mean, there, there am I, there was, a, there was a, young, a young girl killed in my villa, a man in a brown suit, on the very same ship as me, and all I want is a quiet life, as I said. I... Ah! Oh, 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 oh. You see what I mean? You see that? Did you, did you see that? That just illustrates what I was talking about. Somebody did that deliberately. Why should they do it deliberately? Why? Why should anyone want to kill me? Huh? Why? I must admit, at this particular moment, I feel in need of a lie down. Of course you do. I, I, I must say, it was quite a shock. Yes. I'll go back. I'm sure it was just an accident. I, I jumped to conclusions about these things. Let's take you back to the hotel. above the falls in memory of the night you almost took a swan dive into the Indian Ocean the man in the brown suit Harry's here Harry's here when suddenly a huge boulder came tumbling down the rock cliff coolly I stepped out of the way or I could have been annihilated on the spot 
Susie and Anne were hysterical. I calmed them with my masculine aplomb. playing doctor again. Who are you? Who are you? Where are we? My home. Until the police show up, that is. I didn't write this. No, I guess not. I don't understand. Why did you respond to it? Because you said you were in trouble. Why should you care? How can you say that? You snatched me from the jaws of death twice now. What happened at the falls? I wasn't pushed. Somebody rearranged the stones marking the path. They led you straight over the edge into infinity. And you were there to catch me? Some branches caught you. You had to be somewhere near the branches. How come? I've been following your little group since you left the ship. Oh, Harry. <clears throat> Why didn't you tell me? I can help you. I know who killed Anita. It was the Colonel. What do you know about the Colonel? Well, I sort of know who he is. Who? Hedler's secretary, Guy Underhill. Why do you think that? Well, for many reasons. Mostly because you hit the man who tried to throw me overboard. And the next day, Guy Underhill shows up with a black eye. I slugged the man in the shoulder, not in the face. <laughs> well... I can still help you. I think I have the Brazilian diamonds. What? Are they pink? Yes. Well, then I have them. I mean, I, I don't have them on me. I think you've already established that. But I do have them. Where are they? With Susie. And they're yours to do whatever you want with. On one condition. Name it. I get to hear the rest of the story. Oh. Harry, come on, we're just getting to the good part. Well, Mr. Race's recitation ended in Brazil, as I recall. Uh-huh. When John and Harry were attacked by Indians. John was killed. But Harry got away. With his friend dead, he lost interest in clearing his name and just about everything else. He drifted back to Africa and made his living running an excursion boat near the Thompson Falls. One day at the hotel, he saw Anita's husband, who he recognized from Kimberley. And when he asked about him, he discovered that he'd been a diamond sorter at the Van Zandt's company. The man who was killed at the airport, Carton. Exactly. When he confronted Carton, he confessed that Anita had stolen Harry's Brazilian diamonds and replaced them with the one stolen from Van Zandt's. She gave six of the diamonds to the colonel, but she kept four of them, so she could blackmail the colonel if she ever needed to. Then those are the pink ones we found, and the reason Anita was killed. Yes. Harry followed Carton until he found Anita. But before he could talk to her, she was killed by the colonel. Why do you keep referring to yourself in the third person? Because I think this has become a bedtime story. I'm going to sleep at. I feel so relaxed here. I'm like a different person. It's Africa. It renews you. Mm. I feel like Eve at the beginning of time. Who am I? Adam? Or the snake? 
Maybe you're the apple. Ah. Well? Nothing. Nobody's heard from her. Nobody's seen her. Oh, dear, oh, dear. I do blame myself most dreadfully, you know. I really do. Good choice. You should have raised a search party the moment that guest reported hearing a scream at the falls. My dear chap, you do condemn me with hindsight. When Susie and I failed to locate you, as well as Anne, I naturally assumed that you and she had gone off somewhere together. Which also naturally leads me to the question, where exactly were you last night? Why should the Colonel be afraid of your diamonds? Because the police have a description of the diamonds, because of their color, they're pink and unique and could prove that we were framed. So you have the diamonds, you can clear yourself. No, I have to have all ten of my diamonds before I go to the police, because of the original testimony which said we had ten. So we're right back where we started from. Ah, it's hopeless. Harry, don't give up now. Like I did before? I didn't say that. What are you doing with me? You're one of these batty women that rescues wounded birds and buries dead caterpillars? It's not very nice. Well, I'm not very nice. No, you're not. You have to be nice. I'm in love with you. You're alive. Oh, honey, you came back. You came back. <laughs> well, I know, of course, you came back. I don't know why I was so concerned. You always come back. <laughs> Sit down and talk to me. Who's this? The warm and gracious man in the brown suit, Harry Lucas. He saved my life. Oh, for goodness sake. How do you do? Well, sit down and tell me all about it. I'll explain later. Where is everyone? Well, so Eustace and Miss Wilkie went off to Cairo. I hung around here in case you might show up. Gordon stayed with me. As a matter of fact, we were just about to leave. Haven't we met before? No, I don't think so. Where are the diamonds? They belong to Harry. Oh. They're going to help clear him. Oh. Well, there might be just a slight problem. Why did you do that? Because I didn't know where you were, or even if you were anymore. What is it? A small inconvenience. Define small. The diamonds are on their way to Cairo with Peddler. We have to set a trap for the Colonel, whoever he is. But who is he? Is he Peddler? Is he Underhill? Or Race? One of them tried to kill me. The thing to do is to go to Cairo and confront them all. Well, I'm coming with you. Game's over. You lose. So you're both connected to the Colonel. I must say, I suspected Anne, but you really had me fooled, Susie. I'm afraid I'm going to have to hand you all over to the police. Gordon, don't be ridiculous. Although I must say this does put me in a severe state of mixed emotions. On the one hand, I know you're not a criminal, but on the other hand, you think I am. Come on, sweetheart. It's a piece of cake. Give me chapter and verse on the colonel here, and I'll have you back on the bayou before you know it. You think Harry is the colonel now? Why? Because of you. Me? When I bailed you out in Cairo, I thought you were just another flaky citizen in a jam. But then when you surfaced on the Kilmorden Castle and started hanging out with Susie, who just happened to move into Anita's cabin... I started to think maybe you pushed Leo Carton in front of that taxi after all. What? And then you kept appearing like a magician's rabbit and then disappearing. And now you've materialized with the man in the brown suit. It's taken me years, but at last, the colonel and his lieutenants. Gordon, listen, I'm only on this cruise because Pedler invited me, and I'd never laid eyes on this young man till a few minutes ago. And as for Anne... She's been moving heaven and earth trying to find the colonel herself. Race, you're crazy. The colonel stole my diamonds. I went to the villa to try and get them from Anita, but he'd killed her. 
He pushed Dan overboard and I saved her. He then sent her over the falls and I found her. You say you've been looking for the Colonel for years. Well, I was in Brazil all that time. You must be the Colonel yourself. That's right. When I went to the falls, Peddler was dictating to Miss Wilkie. I heard him. Susie was asleep, but you were nowhere to be found. You must have pushed me. Oh, Gordon, it's not true, is it? Susie, you have to believe I'd never do such a thing. Here. You're right, I am CIA. I had to leave the hotel to use my phone to report to my people, Cairo, and the situation here. It's when I was gone from the hotel that Anne had her fall. But Harry here, for all his explanation, was in Kimberley when the diamonds were stolen. It was at the villa when Anita was killed. It was on the ship when you got pushed. And he's here at the falls as well. Well, there's only one way to convince you, Race. Anne and Susie have my diamonds. They're in Cairo, and they'll prove I didn't steal the Van Zandt diamonds. Let's go to Cairo. You're under arrest. No. Whether or not you're the colonel, I think you did kill Anita, and you've got a lot of explaining to do. You ladies can do what you wish, but you're both witnesses, and you're going to have to testify, so don't think about going anywhere. Come well, on, let's go. We've got a long trip ahead of us. Maybe we ought to reconsider this. Oh, honey, listen, we don't even know who the colonel is. It could be Underhill. It could be Padma. It could be very dangerous. I know, but we have to get the diamonds because it's the only way we can clear ha I thought you were dead. Now, why would you think that? Uh, it was on the television. Uh, they said you were missing without trace. It's a miracle, isn't it? Uh, please come in. Sir Eustace will be thrilled to see you. It's amazing that you survived. Those falls are really treacherous. You should know. You're the one who pushed me over. That's ridiculous. What on earth are you talking about? Well, why don't you tell us? Look, I was here in Cairo. I have proof of that. I was nowhere near the falls. Then when I was in the market in Mombasa, you were plotting with the Arab who had kidnapped me. Not at all. As far as I can remember, some Arab just asked me if I had a cigarette. How about Washington? You've never been near Washington, D.C. in your life. Where were you when Amita was murdered? I was... Uh, yeah. I was... Uh -huh. Oh, God, I, I can't go on pretending like this. I'm too nervous. Yes, where were you? Look, you must understand, I did it for my children. If it weren't for them, I would never have perpetrated such a fraud. Then you did kill Anita. Of course not. I, I don't know who killed her. When Sir Eustace hired me, he specified that as he traveled extensively, he could never work with a family man. In fact, I was already married. So when he decided to sell the villa, I had to make secret arrangements to pack up my wife and children. I was terrified that he'd seen me here the day that Anita was murdered, when I was supposed to be in Washington. Then he didn't see you here the day Anita was killed. I don't know. Anne! My dear, poor, brave girl, you are safe. Thank heaven. So good to see you again, Colonel Peddler. Colonel? May I introduce the Colonel? Very clever, Anne. Very clever. Poor Underhill. Your tiresome respectability has done for me at last, as indeed I assumed it would. You're so worried about yourself. It didn't occur to you to wonder what I was doing here in Cairo instead of being in London where I was supposed to be. And I had everything arranged so beautifully. It was all so wonderful. I sent you over to Washington. I nipped over here just for one day to cover my tracks. No one in London would ever have known. So, you killed Anita. When I saw you arrive, I thought, I know, a spot of tea. So I ordered some. Shall we sit down, ladies? Why don't we sit down? Ladies. Oh. 
out of the way on the hill. Thank you. I believe you know this gentleman. Are my young friends ready for their tea? My lord, it's the Reverend Chichester without his collar. No, Susie, it's Miss Wilkie. Don't you see? What? And the stewardess from the Kilmorden Castle. Ladies, I fear you are failing to fully comprehend the gravity of your present situation. However, all in due course, eh? First things first, how'd you like your tea? Shall I be mother? Uh -uh. Don't do anything foolish. Mix also has a gun. Ask him about the fools. All right, yes, yes, yes. I'm, I'm sorry, but Mix is dying to know. How did you survive the plunge? Fell in some branches. But you've been trying to kill me from the beginning. Even before I knew what was going on. Why? Yes, I apologize, Anne. I really do apologize. I do like you, you see, Anne. I've liked you from the very first moment I met you. However, what was I supposed to do with a meddlesome young woman who commandeered a ship's cabin in which I had a particular interest and then sneaked into my own cabin and then to compound her felony refused to fall overboard. My dear girl, what was I to do? I think your plan at the falls was really the best. I could have sworn you were in your hotel room dictating when I went out. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I must admit, that was Minx's finest performance, Miss Wilkie. And he uh, impersonates my voice quite credibly, don't you think? So it was Miss Wilkie who pushed the rock to come close enough to you to keep you above suspicion. My, 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 what terribly clever people we're dealing with. Well, they haven't managed to kill me yet. They succeeded with Anita. Minx, why don't you be a good little henchman and go away and practice henching for a bit? Go and sharpen something. Preferably your teeth. Oh, take care of my secretary, will you? I do hope you will forgive me for lying about Washington, Eustace. I've always been loyal to you. I suppose you have no alternative but to fire me now. <laughs> fire you? Man's a fool. Yeah, we'll talk about it later. Well, would you consider it brazen of me to... Inquire about Anita's demise? Yes, I would, Susie. However, I've always found brazenness to be your most endearing quality. The woman said to me, there were ten Brazilian diamonds, lovey, not six. Guess who has the other four, she said. And guess who's going to sell them to Harry Lucas if you don't promptly come across with half a million pounds? I wanted those diamonds more than anything I'd ever wanted in my life. So, I shot her. But she didn't have the diamonds. I found a puzzling cable from Carton in her bag referring to the Kilmorden Castle. And later, when I learned of Carton's death, the cable remained as my only link to the diamonds. So, that's how I came to join you on the cruise. Susie came along as cover. Sorry, darling. Minx, I brought along in case I needed a little help. However, I must admit, the cable defied interpretation. Now, tell us about the Van Zant robbery. Leo Carton was, was the sorter who dropped the packets, wasn't he? And then you... You helped him pick them up. You made the switch. The sugar cubes for the diamonds. Well, even a child knows that the hand is quicker than the eye. Especially if the thing you are taking resembles identically the thing you are replacing it with. Anita had told me how extraordinary the boy's pink diamonds were. I had to possess them. I love beautiful things. 
So I hit on a plan to steal the diamonds, with Carton's help, from Van Zandt, and have Anita substitute them for the pink ones. It was a master stroke. But the police guessed about the switched packets, didn't they? All they needed was a connection between you and Carton. I do hope that you dear people don't have an exaggerated fear of drowning. Because I have just decided that is the most humane way of dispatching you. What about a trade? Let us go and we'll give you the diamonds. And what a good idea that would be if only you had the diamonds, but you don't. I've suddenly realized I've had them all along. Otherwise, why would you both be here? Susie, you asked me to bring one or two of your more valuable items back here to Cairo. Amongst the things you asked me to bring back was this case. Now, what of great value could there possibly be in this case? Because I know, for instance, you see, that you never travel your real jewelry with you. You are, however, a very generous and open-hearted friend, the sort of person that people entrust things to, isn't she, Anne? <laughs> Back here. Come back here. Well, I like a woman with good hands. Oh, thank you. Gordon! Blimey, God, I, I, I never done nothing. The diamonds aren't in that case. No? No, of course not. They're in these lovely wooden artifacts you so graciously carried back for me. Ah, uh, a giraffe. Well, yes, of course. Honey, excuse me, but I think these belong to you. Thanks. <laughs> so, Eustace, would you be kind enough to go with these two? Yes, yes, of course I will. If I might have a few moments to change into something more suitable. Stay with them. Goodbye, Sir Eustace. And I have lied about a lot of things, but never about your legs, nor about my admiration for you. It's a great pity that you and I haven't got to know each other better. But one day, perhaps, another time, another place, you never know. But he has to be the bad guy. Gordon, I never for one minute doubted that you would rescue us. But how on earth did you know where we were? I never believed the Colonel was anyone but Peddler, but I just couldn't get him to reveal himself. So I took a chance that he'd finally show his hand to the two of you. That's why I took Harry into custody and why I didn't prevent your coming here. But how could you be sure something awful wouldn't happen to us? Nothing could have happened to you. Somebody was following you every step of the way. Besides, do you think I'd let anything happen to my future wife? Oh, good and right. What makes you think I'm the marrying kind? Oh, my God, I just remembered who you are. Who is he? Why, you're John Erdsley. You're not Harry Lucas. No wonder you look so familiar. You're the spitting image of your father. Could I speak to you outside for a moment, please? You said you were Harry Lucas. I'd loaned Harry Lucas my watch, a gift from my late father. While well, Harry was so badly burned, they accepted the watch's identification. Why didn't Carton and Peddler know you were John well, Erdsley? They'd only seen Harry and me together. And Anita had never bothered to indicate who was who. Well, when you made the same assumption Carton did, I let it stand. Just which Harry was in love with Anita? The real one. I'm in love with you. The last time I saw you, you couldn't look at me without gritting your teeth. Now you're telling me you're in love with me? I was a fugitive then. I had nothing to offer you. But now my name's been cleared, and there's a title and an estate waiting for me in England. Well, I've never been so insulted in all my life. I couldn't possibly love Harry of the jungle, but Sir John of the stately home. Well, it's still my foolish heart.
You don't want to be Lady Anne and live in baronial splendor? Do I get to wear one of these crowns on my head? And eat tea and crumpets in the drawing room? And go riding to hounds? They don't kill the fox anymore. Anne, I'm asking you to marry me. I always did like a movie that ends with a 